Dr. Hamdudu or Triple H, if you wish, who is president of the Party of National Unity Progress. Let's find out on how you would want to uh, achieve this prosperity of Zambia. And also let's inquire, we we'll get much into his brains and find out what he remembers about the regards of KK. Mr. President, welcome to this special interview on the day, of course, that uh, many Zambians, the continent at large, as well as the world, is mourning the demise of KK. Welcome. Thank you, um, Innocent, and it's a great pleasure um, to appear mm. on movie TV um, on this very somber occasion. Sure. <clears throat> Let me start by, first of all, uh, passing uh, my sincere condolences mm. <coughs> to the Kaunda family, the immediate family, uh, on the demise of um, our first uh, president, our sure. founding president of this uh, republic. Mm. Um, <clears throat> you know I was born after independence. Eh? Sure. I was born in 1968, mm. uh, oh, yeah. which was basically just in the entry of the second term Indeed. of um, the new government. Sure. Uh, remember, from 1964 to mm. 1968, elections. So I was born around the elections. Oh, yeah of um, 1968, which was the second term. So you are a blessed person. Well, so well, yes, we, yeah. were, <laughs> we were born with a silver spoon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, even as I grew up and went to school, hmm. um, I went to grade one. And, uh, you know, the, in, the, in the villages, we used to go to school late at eight years. Hmm. Um, in 1976. Right. Yeah, we lived the better days of this country. Right. Of course, even... Yeah, the people that came before us, mm. um, they said it was even better. Sure. Other, you know, uh, in the first years of the independence. But we found the, the milk and honey mm. um, in 1976 when I went to school. Of course, when I was born, I didn't know anything there. Mm. Uh, by the time I began to, you know, to know things, and I can, first I can remember mm. when I went to school in 1976, um, you go to school, um, the books were, were provided. Mm. Uh, the pencils, you know, uh, the clients to mm. paint, uh, uh, and then at break time, uh, you are given all sorts of things to play. All right. Uh, when you finish your break time, you bring your things back. That's uh, provided by, by the school, the, the school oh, administration. Oh, oh. Yes. So, Bought by the government. Exactly. So, right. Dr. Kaunda, mm, true to his calling, was a teacher, um, and he did very well. Um, right. putting a very strong educational foundation mm. for this country. At independence, uh, you, know, you remember, uh, they say there were only 100 graduates. Sure. And Kaunda, Dr. Kaunda prioritized the uh, education, mm. uh, which itself is the most important um, ladder uh, you know, for people to climb to any aspiration. Sure. You know, education um, is, is the most important ladder. Um, for, for, for a country like ours, for mm. a developing country, for its people to rise from whatever situation sure. into something. Mm. And, and, and from that premise, uh, Dr. Gaunda's government was correct. Right. And, and he put so much emphasis on education to a point where Zambia, within a few years, mm. uh, became a center of learning in the region. Right. And was known to have one of the best human manpower. Mm. Um, in, 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 in the region. And remember, within two decades or so, uh, Zambia began to supply manpower in the region. Right. Yeah. You know, even in the new independent states in the southern part began to benefit from the strong educational foundation mm. that the unity government uh, put in place. Right. Now, education is the best equalizer. Uh, and even today, um, it still stands the same. That right. Uh, a developing country like ours should put a highest premium on education because it, education is the best social ladder. Right. Not only social, social mm. economic ladder. Right. For people to move for where they, from where they are mm. to something else. And that's why we all found ourselves here and speaking English like this. It was all because of the, the, the social economic ladder that Dr. Kaunda's government, the UNIP administration, put in place for us, uh, you know, to begin to climb and be what we are. 
Um, that provided a very strong foundation, you know, right. uh, for this country. Mm, how I wish that we didn't temper along the way. Right. Uh, we could have continued because, you know, there, there is a generation now that is mm. lost when that was template was tempered. Right. Uh, for Kaunda, I think it was access to education for all. So we had the best of times. As we get into the nitty gritties of our discussion, Mr. President, um, I, I want you to simplify. There has been a lot of uh, submissions and definitions, uh, description about uh, the man we are mourning today, um, the next uh, 20, <coughs> 21 days. Others have called this person as a man with a big heart, as a freedom fighter, as a man with a white handkerchief. Uh, just in one word, as a president, Hive Hamdudu, how would you describe Dr. KK? In one word, from yourself. A born leader. A born leader. When you look at Dr. Kaunda, you now believe the, mm -hmm. the saying that leaders are born. Right. Um, son of a reverend. Mm. With sure. a very good upbringing. Mm and a Christian you know, upbringing. That spoke very well to leadership. Right. I'm a Christian myself. You cannot divorce leadership to religion. Right. Otherwise, your leadership does not stand. It doesn't stand in books or education or whatever. Hmm. Leadership stems from a religion, for us Christians, from Christianity. Because the true leader is God. You know? hmm. uh, until you have a relationship with God, a true one, you can never be a good leader. Right. And uh, from... And that's, really, that's what made him stand out and do the good things he did, not only for Zambia, for the region and the world. Son of a reverend mm. and a Christian himself. And he practiced Christianity, you know. Remember, he was quoting one of the best verses in the Bible. Mm. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Oh, yeah. uh, you love know. your neighbors, you want to yes. love yourself. But that's a, that is a summary mm. of even all the commandments. All right. So, right. see, he summarized, and you, you could see um, even his singing in church, you know. He was such an impressive leader, you know. Mm. Even us who came to know him along the way, because we were born after independence. Sure. You see the man singing Rock of Ages, mm. cleft for me, and he would take his guitar. Can you imagine an African leader uh, at a church in England singing? He just said, wow, what a, what a leader, you understand, eh? Uh, yeah. So, uh, Dr. Kaunda became impressive, I think, from the very beginning. Mm. This song that you are listening to, um, he, he was the one that was uh, leading. You know, I hear on the Copper Belt, oh, yeah. when he was teaching there, mm. he was a choir master mm. in the church. So, his brush with Christianity is a real foundation of what he became, a true Christian. And who was not satisfied, for example, with the independence of this country and we live as a cocoon. Mm. Uh, and he crossed over the Zambezi River you know, to support our friends in the south. He crossed over the Limpompo River until, by the time he was leaving, Africa actually was free. You remember, by the time he left, the last colony like Namibia had gotten independence in 1990, mm. and uh, Mandela was read out in 1990. Sure. And it was very nice, you know, in 1990, mm. I was... Um, uh, in my first year, mm. I went to University of Zambia in 1989, at the end, in October. Right. So into 89, into 1990, we were in the first year. By the way, it was my first time to go to the airport. We were picked at, at the University of Zambia mm. to go to, you know, to, to, to the airport to go and receive uh, Nelson Mandela. Right. It was in February, I remember, mm. 1990. And the first country that Nelson Mandela came to visit, outside South Africa, when he was raised, was Zambia. Mm. It was very nice um, when we went to, to the as students to to to, the, to to Osaka International Airport, now Kenneth County International Airport, mm. and um, all the presidents in the region came, okay. and other friends like Asa Arafat um, and uh, uh, Museveni. Mm. Uh, right. You're very Kaguta Museveni. He's mm. a comrade. <laughs> Don't right. you believe these <laughs> these things you are hearing. Okay. So, <clears throat> and Dr. Kaunda received Mandela as he was coming out of the plane and he began to introduce uh, you know, to, 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 to Nelson Mandela all the presidents. Mm. And I remember, you know, first, first for example, there was um, Robert Mugabe. Mm. Comrade Mandela, I want to introduce you to the president of Zimbabwe, Robert Gabriel Mugabe. Next, I want to introduce you to the next president, president of Botswana, um, Ketumire Masire. Mm. We call him Pula. Next, he went round and round. 
you know, mm. Joaquin, Joaquin Michisano, and then finally, you know, at the end of the, the frontline state the presidents, mm. uh, there was now one of our comrades from Palestine, Asa Arafat. Asa Arafat. And then after Asa Arafat came uh, the man who fought for his country, and he called him the rebel, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. Mm. So they line up at the airport. <laughs> um, and then from the airport, Dr. Kaunda and, uh, and Nelson Mandela, you know, um, went into an open uh, uh, land cruiser right. yeah, to greet the people from the airport right up to State House. I have never seen a gathering of people along the road like that that, that day. Wow. Um, um, so Dr. Kaunda really has done something that is very something that is very difficult um, to explain in a short time like this one. Mm. Um, like one, one president of the political party, Sean Tembo, mm. of uh, PEP said, uh, we need a library for Dr. Kaunda right. to document his works. Um, um, we should do more to honor his memory as we celebrate his life. I mean, 97 really is a good life lived. Mm. And what we are doing, he said he has left, but for us young people really is to thank God and celebrate such a good life and uh, a life that he gave to others. So Dr. Kaunda gave to others. You look at his family. They gave. Mm -hmm. I have visited Dr. Kaunda at their home there at State Lodge, I think twice or so. Mm -hmm. You see if a man and a family that gave to the country. Right. Uh, so we, 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 we mourn and celebrate a giant of, 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 of Zambia, mm -hmm. of Sadiq, of Africa, and of the world. And you're not surprised to mm -hmm. hear. Mm -hmm. To see the messages of uh, condolences coming from all over, not only Sadiq regions, region, but as far all as uh, mm. the, you know, the, the Britain, the U.S., and so on. And more, more interesting, the Zambian government has declared 21 days of national mourning, very befitting. Sure. And then other countries come in. Botswana has declared seven days of national mourning. Sure. Mm. Malawi, seven days of national mourning. I think Zimbabwe, three days of national mourning. Mm. Uh, South Africa, 10 days of national mourning. And I think the government of Zambia did well mm. to put a longer period. If they had done uh, seven days, they are going to court nothing because <laughs> South Africa has given 10 days of national mourning. Yeah. Of course, they needed to do that. Right. The sacrifice to Dr. Kaunda and UNIP that Zambia gave to the liberation of South Africa was immense. Um, some of the problems we have today were wrought in that, and they, they recognize that that uh, even economically, this country <coughs> was dealt a heavy blow. It was not easy to fight these imperialists. They, they are well funded, they have all the money. And you know, um, South Africans to fight against apartheid, and to fight um, uh, the occupiers in Zimbabwe, the occupiers in, in, in Namibia, mm. and so on, and to support the friends in, in Mozambique against the Portuguese and in Angola. That, that was really heavy. Eh? That was really heavy. Okay. The estimations of the cost of the liberation struggle in the 25 years or more mm. that it took place, um, almost 30 years, there's some document, uh, unconfirmed, mm. that the total cost of that liberation struggle for Zambia could have been as much as $20 billion. More that, that yes, well. more than the, the so-called seven mm. billion debt we owed. Mm. Some of that debt yeah. was a debt of the liberation struggle. Okay. It's a pit that. Um, so, so this at, simply means that. Sorry to just to uh, yes. to, to get into your yes. uh, to your thoughts. This simply means that Zambia really we spent uh, huge sums of money to help our neighbours so that yes, 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 they yes, could yes. also be independent as we were at that moment as we are today. Yes, hello. When the, at, the, at the, the height of the Ian Smith government mm. in southern Rhodesia, which is Zimbabwe now, they had to close the southern route. Right. Our main tube for exports and imports was through this, this corridor mm. into Durban and passing through Zimbabwe. Right. When uh, Ian Smith declared the, the United <coughs> Declaration of Independence in, in Zimbabwe, declared independence, uh, no voting. And uh, the counter government, uh, I mean, the UNIP government said, no, that's not correct. And he had to close the route to force Zambia to, to bend to their interests. And that was very costly because uh, we didn't have good infrastructure here. Right. 
Right. And um, you cannot be importing everything through through the road. It was very expensive. And the roads were not yet done, you know. The, 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 the road to, to, to Dar es Salaam was not in a good shape. Yeah. And then uh, some of the things were being imported by, by aeroplanes. And through the help of our good all-weather friends. And we must document history properly. Yeah? China, with all the issues that we see here, mm. is a true friend of Zambia and Africa. China? Oh, yes. Right. Only, only ignorant people will not know that. <laughs> <laughs> the, there were many options, mm. and other options could not work. He said, you cannot put a new red line into Dar es Salaam. It's not possible. It takes so many years. The Chinese government came, Dr. Kaunda's government and, and the Dr. Marimu Nyerede came together, approached the government of the People's Republic of China, and they put up the Tazara railway line in a record time. And they beat the time. I, they, I they think beat it's the, very important. They because beat the time. I, I'm not going to cut you short. Yes. Uh, I want you to submit up to ah. the end because there has been a lot of talks, Mr. President, you are aware, regarding the, the issues to do with our colleagues, the Chinese people, the Chinese government. Others feel that these are individuals that have now uh, resurfaced, you know, in the name of, you know, investors, but in the actual sense, you, well, they have come <sighs> here as colonizers as well. Just tell us a yes, little bit. Yes, uh, you know, you know, I'm, here, I'm not here to yeah. defend China. I'm yeah. here to put the correct history. Exactly. Yeah. If you don't understand this, that is important. If you don't understand history, you cannot be trusted with the future. Right. <clears throat> we need to understand history hmm. to inform us our today and our tomorrow. Right. Even in the business, you can't just boom say I want to do this. You hmm. you look at a, you do a market research. That is history for you oh, to right. project. Hmm. And and the, the, the People's Republic of China. In that today, you know, um, in, as we mourn ground, we must recognize right. the role that China played in this and being an all-weather friend to our government through Dr. Kaunda. Right. And, 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 and Nyerere. And he put up uh, Tazara uh, railway line. Right. The Tazara railway line, Tazania Zambia railway line that was put uh, in, uh, in that yeah. time <coughs> was the biggest infrastructure project that the People's Republic of China did outside the mainland. That's how mm. <laughs> iconic it is in the relationship between the people's Zambia, people of China and, um, and, 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 and Zambia. Right. So, so these uh, uh, patriarchs, uh, Dr. Kaunda uh, and, 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 and Nyerere, um, first of all, they were the first ones to support the liberation struggle. First in Tanzania, Tanganyika then got independence, and then later Zambia. So this became mm. actually the first support line for the liberation struggle. That's why you mm. see the ANC first went to, to, to Tanganyika. The SWAP first went to Tanganyika. Right. Then when Zambia got independence in 1964, then they began to open offices here. Mm. Yeah. SWAP came here because it became nearer you know, to, to Namibia. The Tanganyika, which is now called uh, Tanzania. Tanzania, yeah. you know, the, the yeah. union. Mm. So, so they went there right when it was Tanganyika, you know, before it became a union. Right. So Tanzania and Zambia, through the leaderships of these um, uh, patriots, uh, Nyerere and, 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 and KK, mm. uh, provided the first line of support in Southern Africa right. to free the neighbors. It was costly. It's a pity maybe <laughs> after the liberation of the last states and also the defeat of the apartheid regime, there was no martial plan to rebuild uh, the, the, you know, the destruction mm. of, um, of, our, of our countries. I'm happy our friends in the region mm. uh, this time uh, can you know um, you know empathize with us over over the loss. Mm. Uh, but more than that, there is more to that. Despite the, that, there's more to that, Mr. President. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you know, like I, I want us to maybe take much a little bit of our time uh, because there are a lot of young people out there. Uh, there are some Zambians that are watching us, um, of course, uh, both top star decoders as well as movie TV channel one. Uh, not forgetting on social media as well. They might be arguing, once again, when you talk about China, it's like you are poking into people's no, brains. No, 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 that is a, you know, let me tell you something. But what has gone wrong along the way in terms of our relationship between Zambia as well as China? Because we are seen somehow again without, um, you know, pretending that some of our people, they are being abused, you know, at the hands of these, our, 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 our investors, our... Our friends, long-time friends, well, the Chinese. We don't support abuse yeah. of Zambians by any nationality. Right. 
we never accepted uh, the Europeans exploiting our black people, mm. Mm. segregating against our black people. Right. We will not accept Chinese segregating against our black people here. Right. But it does not remove the fact that China, as a republic, right. has been an all-weather friend of this country. The major infrastructure project after independence were done by China. And their relations in the Eastern Bloc, mm. USSR, Yugoslavia, and so on. I, I just came from Luapula, I mean, mm. last month, there, Tuta Bridge on that, on that Bangweru yeah. plain was done by the Chinese. So, so the Chinese have done so much for us. The issue of this agreement between Zambians yeah. and Chinese it is an issue of um, not implementing maybe labor laws. Right. Can't remove the importance of China, not only the, uh, during during the struggle, mm. but post the struggle, even today. Which economy is more important for Zambia? Uh, the big economies. Yeah, China. When you, China. Yeah. China consumes more mm. of our products. Sure. Uh, we have more access for Chinese technology. Mm. Right now, most of our children have, are studying in China. Mm. China is a bigger market. China's uh, restriction on our products <coughs> into that market is not as, as much as the Western world. Without any discrimination, mm. China is a very important uh, ally, but we must have a win-win partnership. That is what is lacking. Maybe, maybe, they really reminded. maybe they need to be reminded. Maybe they need to be reminded as well. You it's know, not reminded. In as much as uh, they are important to this country as well, uh, I am fully aware that there is no government or there is no leadership in this world on this uh, uh, planet Earth which is going to send their people to go and exploit or abuse other people's children. You know, it could be maybe the misbehavior of some of these investors that are coming from China. You know, without a, having the blessings of their leaders, maybe what could be your message to these investors that are coming from China who might not understand not, not or only, not only be China. aware about this kind of, you know, rich relationship that is there between Zambia and China? What what could be your message? No, to no them? I don't want to be xenophobic. Yeah, uh, just for, say, for me, I'll say an that. advice. Just say that. Advice. For me, I'll say that. Yeah. For all the investors who come here, whether you're coming from Europe or America yeah, or China, right. you must abide by the, the, the labor laws and other laws in this country. Mm. Respect uh, uh, the people, right. um, and not only Zambians, any human being requires dignity. Mm. Uh, uh, and therefore, it's a question of enforcing uh, the laws which are already there. Right. You understand it? Eh? Right. But you, you don't bring that uh, to cloud the relationship. Mm. There is also propaganda in the West against China. We must not be ignorant, be drawn into that. Let them have their own, you know, battles. Their own battles. Mm. Uh, for us, we must welcome the Europeans, we must welcome Americans, we must welcome Chinese because we benefit from mm. all these nations. So, so we must not join people's wars. Right. You understand? Like we had on the, the Cold War of the East and the West. Mm. So, so China, even in the top economies, uh, say that you cannot do without China. <laughs> the West cannot do without China. Who are you, right. a, a developing country like Zambia, to say you cannot do away with China? So then you want to deal with China through a second part, mm. or a third part, because you go to Europe and, and, and America, and mm. you go and buy a suit, you find made in China. Right. So China now is, is basically becoming the factor of the world. So it's a question of now crafting a win-win <coughs> economic partnership without a framework of engagement between Zambia and, and China, we will mm. see a lopsided kind of, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, interaction. So it's up to the Zambian government mm. uh, to put in place an economic partnership and relations that has a win-win um, safeguards, mm. so, that, so that we benefit, they benefit. And I think during uh, Dr. Kaunda's government under UNIP, they had a win-win uh, kind of arrangement. Sure. If you know that time, China did more for us <coughs> than we did for them. Since now we have gone into an era of economic diplomacy, mm. we need an economic partnership that is structured between ourselves and the, the Republic of China to continue uh, the trajectory mm. that uh, Dr. Kaunda left for us. In relation to your, your, your political party, PNUP, um, let's imagine you are to be elected as a president on um, um, August 12th. You know, what have you packaged in terms of uh, improving the labor 
you know, sect in this country. Yeah, uh, Vis-a-vis all these issues we are talking about, abuse or exploitation of workers in this country. No, but you you know, a... lack of jobs, you know, it's another issue to talk about. If Haiv Hamdudu was president of this republic called Zambia, how would you improve these issues? As a remembrance to the role that KK played in this country. Yeah, you know, like, uh, like uh, some politicians said mm. before, we already have sufficient regulations in this country and right. laws. The problem is implementation. Right. Yeah. Dr. Gaunda used to talk about, you know, the fight against exploitation of man by man. Mm. You know, That's exploitation right. of man by man <laughs> sometimes is worse, is worse than some of the issues we are fighting against. So Kaunda had a, Dr. Kaunda had a balanced approach. Right. The fight against corruption, um, against nepotism, mm. against tribalism. Against yeah. you know the exploitation of man and the, another man, right. but you know the, the current liberal economy you have to be very careful. Mm. Capitalism carries along an inherent exploitative nature, <laughs> and therefore, as a government, if you are in government, you will have to deliberately put mechanisms. We believe in a free market economy, yeah. but you have to deliberately put the mechanisms that stops the over exploitation of one man by the other and what so mechanisms can one mechanism be put in place one mechanism is that um, you need to you need to have a broad based empowerment what kaunda had mm. dr kaunda was a broad based empowerment where all zambians get a fair chance to get educated so that they can compete fairly right. in the job market in whatever <coughs> things they want to do so in this free market economy through the treasury, through the taxes that we get, you need to invest um, in, in bringing the masses of our people in the main line of the economic activities right. so that we all become part of the growth agenda. Hmm. You know, under Dr. Kaunda, the, the inequality was quite uh, less. Hmm. You know, but during this liberal era, because we, we lack a broad-based agenda, a, a, a developmental state posture within our development policies. Mm. We are actually having a increasing inequalities where the majority are becoming poorer and a little few are becoming better. Right. It is because within our economic and development policies, we are not carrying everyone along. And what we learned from Dr. Kaunda is even informed like in our manifesto. Right. We have done uh, an interrogation of these aspects and put suggestions uh, or proposals mm. to ensure that um, our economic policy, free market as it is, is broad based. The majority of our people are involved in agriculture. Now if you want to lift the majority of the people out of poverty, mm. you need to have a functioning agriculture. You need a profitable agriculture. What did the Dr. Gaunda do? They provided the enablers for people to engage. I'm a son of a farmer. Right. There was financing. We had Lima Bank. Mm. You had Kyusa. You had this year finance services. I worked there mm. as a young graduate. Right. So there was a multiplicity <laughs> of um, uh, loan facilities, financing for agriculture development. Because any, any genuine development requires <coughs> financing. You can't just come boo and you have capital. You got it from where? Right. So, Business develops through financing. You can have a brilliant idea, mm. a brilliant farming idea, or whatever idea. If there is no financing, you will die with that idea. And therefore, Kaunda provided financing for farmers. You come to Monze, you go to, to Choma Kalomo, and mm. you see how the farmers were prospering under Dr. Kaunda. My father was one of them. He provided, for example, a mechanism mm. to, you know, to buy the produce from the farmers. So there was a red market. What we were supposed to do, hmm. um, after having been educated by Dr. Kaunda, after having learned from him, hmm. was to improve what he was doing. But the mistake we did was to reverse. This is one of the biggest blunders we made in 1991, where everything Dr. Kaunda did was reversed. Hmm. The poverty you see today and the unemployment was wrought in those reversals that were ruthless. What agriculture can you develop without financing? Right. If in our only countries that we helped to liberate, like Namibia, you go in the center of Vindu, you find the, the agribank. 
Financing farmers like you and I, if you want to go into agriculture, there is a financing institution which has agricultural tailored loans. These banks you see here, mm. they, su they support co <laughs> consumption. You cannot get a, an agricultural loan from these banks. They're not meant for that. You need a special uh, financing institution. That's what we provide, for example, in our manifesto, that we need to bring back an agricultural financing institution or bank, but improved from what you know, they had during UNIP. Building up on UNIP, you bring in a public-private partnership bank where you have a private sector, say 50%, government 50%, so that there is no political patronage mm. in the running of the institution, so that they finance viable agricultural activities. That we need is very clear. Again, we had, for example, Nambo <coughs> that was buying our produce from the farmers. Mm. We used to call it copper. <laughs> you understand? It was all copper. Right. There was copper they were selling there. Even agriculture, even the farmers, we used to get money from copper. So the, the, where they used to take, you know, you know maize, you used to be called the copper. Uh, you know, and, and they would bring, you know, take your maize there, and the van will come and pay you just there and then, you know. Uh, in, in and these so, are the, so, so, the so, two so, sectors of uh, the economies yes. that have, you know, uh, sustain Zambia to be where it is today. Exactly. You know, but we, but the but mining we, sector but as well as the I'll agriculture to, sector. But we'll come to, let me finish you know, agriculture. Yes, which is, uh, it's still on the agriculture sector because mm. I also want to find that as you uh, go on with your submission, mm. I wanted to go further. How can we make the agriculture sector very attractive? Because today this sector is perceived to be, you know, a sector of the, the retirees. You know, uh, most of the young people today, they are no longer interested in to get into agriculture. I remember when we were growing up, uh, each time I think we had uh, our own fields, our own uh, farms. You know, today it's no longer that if you see a youth like me get into the field of the farm, somebody's going to laugh at you, you know. And yet you are telling us to say under the man we are mourning today, this sector was very attractive. It was one of the richest sectors of the economy in Zambia. What has you submitted? Can, what has gone wrong? I can give you an example. But how can we revamp? Yes. Again, this sector. Exactly. Yeah. The basis, uh, uh, Mr. Piri, hmm. should be the template left by UNIP, but improve it. All right. Uh, and if you check our manifesto, basically, hmm. it's an improvement of the UNIP, uh, you know, uh, economic trajectory. That hmm. We move a bit to the right and to the left. Right. And in, in, in the partner. Uh, you know, with the private sector. Mm. But for, for Dr. Karunda's government that time, there was an environment that led them, you know, to move more to the left because th there was a liberation struggle. Mm. There was a reason why Dr. Karunda, even the one-party state, there was a reason why uh, Tanzania went to one-party state because democracy, through dem multi-party democracy, it was going to be easy, for example, for the people who were fighting against mm. the West to infiltrate and put a, a puppet government. Uh, you, you look at uh, Angola, <laughs> you know, the multi-party, you know, era just brought a war at that time. You had the MPLA and, and UNITA. They were fighting until the country was left to the ruins. Right. You go to Mozambique, you know, the Renamo and, yeah, sure. and, 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 and Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. They were fighting until the country literally was brought to, to the ground. You look at the hinterland there. But look at Angola. You look at a town like Andulo, Uambo. Those were beautiful towns. Brought to the to the ground and people left amputated, you know, landmines everywhere. Mm. So, so the, the countries that went to one party state were the most stable, right. because there was a fight at that time. There was this liberation struggle, you know. And so, so we we must be very kind to Dr. Kaunda and Unip why they went that route. Right. Uh, it was circumstantial, mm. and it was not only Zambia. But other countries also, except Botswana. Okay, but those that were really at the heart of this fight against the colonialism, against apartheid, you know, they had to be cohesive, be one, and and that worked. And when time came and we were through with the struggle, Dr. Kaunda opened up for multi-party. Hmm. There was no referendum. Kaunda just said, "Okay, people want multi-party," and he signed okay. and he cut his term. Hmm. We were supposed to vote in 1993, and he voted yeah, like by three, indeed, by three years. Know. And yeah. then when he lost, he gave power. And I remember, you know, uh, when he, they were counting votes, that time I was uh, in 1991, mm. I was in my second year at the university. Kaunda came in the morning before they finished counting, said, 
I accept the verdict of the Zambian people. Right. Democrat. But we also never treated him well after that. Mm. This is something we must learn. Oh, yeah. Uh, a man who gave power easily, like that, and then afterwards we begin to harass him and so on. I remember as a student, mm. we visited him here when he was living here in, in Kud Road mm. with my friends Alfred Zuru in, in, in an association at the university. And he was a he had become a lonely man. We found him alone just with Which again along the way was and, evicted. And you, do you know what happened? The house. And we found it was very mm. sad. He said we were inviting him to come and uh, you know speak at a, you know you know at a seminar. He said, young people, um, I'll be vindicated. Right. This thing of emotion, when our elections use emotions, we must never use emotions. You know, Kaunda was bad. Some of these elements, you know, oh, Kaunda was what? Kaunda was what? Kaunda was what? In 1991, I never voted. I never voted even at that time for MMD because I think there was too much blackmail against, um, uh, you know, okay, Dr. Okay. Kaunda. Right. Afterwards, everyone now is running there. Everyone was associated with Dr. Kaunda. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank those who stood by Dr. Kaunda right. on the principle. Yesterday on the NBC, uh, there was um, my elder brother, whom we have come to know each other, mm -hmm. the last Minister of Finance, uh, Mr. You know, Robson Chongo, right. um, wonderful man, you know, he, who stood by Kaunda. Mm -hmm. The Malimba Mashekes, you mm -hmm. know, the Tiawansi Kabwes, uh, the Muhabi Lungus. Mm -hmm. uh, I salute them. Right. They saw beyond that this is a blackmail. And today, I can tell you, everyone wants to take a picture with Dr. Kaunda. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, everybody. And so, that was just... And, and, and that, that was, was going to be my, my question be, again. That's why we must be very careful you with know, the propaganda. Exactly. Against the, like now, the propaganda against China. Yeah. And then, he, some people are talking to Dr. Kaunda. Every mm. day, they're in the plans to China. To mm. go and buy towers, to go and buy phones, to go send mm. their children to school. I mean, we must not be cheap. Yeah. Uh, actually, I wanted to uh, so, ask so, further so question. I don't support China. I'm just Regarding the pictures the you have seen on social yeah, media. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm glad you brought up this yes, issue yes, before yes, I could get into yes, it myself because yes. today it's like KK has become more like, uh, you know, the, 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 the Messiah, you know, to everybody, including those people that crucified him, including those people that insulted him, you know. But anyway, we are free to take those mm. pictures. All of us, we had <laughs> pictures with KK yes, when he was still alive. Yes, but yes. my question is, should we as Zambian uh, citizens end at uh, flashing those pictures, uh, you know, uh, boasting that I took a picture with KK when he was alive. You know, what really should we uh, consume or implement beyond those pictures? No, but uh, you see, the the life of Dr. Kaunda mm. and now his death at 97 is a lesson to us that we must appreciate people when they are still alive. Yeah. Now, there's no need to <laughs> to play games when someone is dying. Mm. I mean, in some societies, they will say, hey, can you stand aside? Mm. Um, we sh but I'm happy that at the end, uh, Zambia as a country showed love to him. Right. And all the presidents, um, um, including our, our late departed uh, brother, I mean, the brother Dr. Chiruba, yeah. also finally, you know, showed love. And, mm. and um, <clears throat> Mwanawasa also who was then in MMD, mm. in the, in the, and later on also showed love mm. to Dr. Kaunda, you know, um, President Rupia Banda, mm. President Sata, uh, President Edgar Lungu, they mm. have all shown befitting love. And, uh, and it was shown how they made his life comfortable. Why uh, should we show love so, to someone when so, he's gone? So you know, see, and, also, and it's a big lesson to people like you who are into politics today, the people that are vying to take over the affairs of this country. You know, fr from now going forward, how should you, do, do you hope to run your politics and the likes? You know, you um, know. You know let's appreciate um, each other. Yeah. And, um, all of us, we are Zambians, we are each other's keeper. We can be in different political parties because mm. it's multi-party. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you don't need to be in someone's party to, be, to, to show that you love. Mm. You can be in any political party. But across the political divides, we must love each other. This thing of because of politics, because we want power, mm. you want to believe, <coughs> be of cantankerous and that you are enemies. Tomorrow you are in church, again you are saying amen together. That is, mm. that is hypocrisy. So, so let's, we are Zambians, we are each other's keeper. Let's be like that. This culture of um, hate driven by politics must come to an end. It's an Zambian. And Dr. Ronda has shown us that, that he loved each, every Zambian and, and beyond the borders of this country. And, and he has brought this honor. 
have you seen a president with these uh, uh, so many countries having mm. a national mourning mm. beyond uh, you know the residence of that that, that president so 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 we must um, uh, we we are not the same we are not perfect there right. is no politician who is, perf who is perfect perfect people live in heaven okay right. and no one should idolize any 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 human being and the, the perfect people are in heaven here we are prone to mistakes we are fully born and we can we make mistakes, all of us, mm. we make mistakes without exception. But then across, across the aisle, mm. let's love one another, like Dr. Kaunda says, you know, um, you know, you know, love, love thy neighbor mm. as they love thyself. Yeah. Do unto others as you want to. If you want to be president, you must also want me to be president. Mm. Simple. You cannot be the only one who, who must be president. This is the attitude you must have. That's why as we go to this election, mm. it's not about how to do or Mr. P.D. or, you know, or, or himself or himself. No. Mm. <laughs> Anyone can become president. And when he becomes president, we must say, okay, amen. Praise God. Mm. You, you understand? There is no one who must say, I must be. That is selfishness. Your political or, party. Or, or I must stay in office. So, yeah. the, that's your love. Right. They can be only one person at a time. Uh, I mean, we are going for this, like 16 candidates. Only yeah. one will pass through. Mm. You understand? It's, it's the most competitive election ever. Oh, you know? yeah. uh, only one passes through. And we must continue as one people. And Dr. Kaunda has shown us that. Remember the last birthday? Um, yeah. Last birthday, remember, mm. at 95. Mm. Which is epic, you know. <clears throat> and, and we thank the government of the day. For giving him that befitting birthday, uh, for those who followed, it was at Pamozi, yeah. and presidents in the region came over oh, yeah. and ex-presidents. Mm. I remember uh, President, you know, Joaquin Chisam, mm. um, Ali Hassan Mwenye of Tanzania. Yeah. I think Benjamin Mukaba came also yeah. in, in from 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 Namibia. So Basanjo as well. Yes, was there. From yeah. what was there? Yeah. From 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 Namibia, mm. two former presidents. Dr. Samu Nyoma mm. and the Kepunye Pohamba. Mm. And uh, you know, that was a, there's a video in Namibia. Yeah. When uh, Dr. Samu Nyoma came here for that video, they made a video and uh, they played. To them, it was so important. Right. And Dr. Kaunda, after cutting that cake, he called them and, and actually fed each one, gave each one. Mm. I could see how uh, Dr. Samu Nyoma was beaming. It was more like a last supper. <laughs> Look, my brother, <laughs> these people, Kaunda took them as brothers. And they lived within the state machinery. Right. And he gave them, you know, a sanctuary and looked after them. Sometimes more than even Zambians. But they were leaders, of course. Yeah. And um, that was a befitting birthday. How I wish they had done it, maybe, you know, at, in, at, the, <laughs> at the stadium so that everybody could have oh, been yeah. there. But, but, um, but we must say that that was a good thing. All right. That there was such a birthday that took, you know, a regional nature. Um, the old presidents. I remember the daughter, you know, thanking government that they're very grateful that in front of these ex-presidents yeah. that uh, Dr. Kaunda has been looked after well and that we thank governments for looking after our father. That was very important while he was alive and mm. he was listening. So for now, we can only learn lessons right. that for that, whoever will be privileged to become president in 12th August, it's not about you. It's about the people. And Kaunda lived for us. And leaders going into the future must live for others. And the calendar lived for humanity. Your he, political he, party, he Mr. Gave, President. He gave his all. But I must say something also. Yeah. Before you say something, your yeah. political party believes much in um, unity as well as, uh, you know, the prosperity of this country. I want to believe that uh, when you were crafting this political party with your colleagues, uh, I think something might have come in your mind to say, as a country, maybe somehow, we are dis disunited, you know, and uh, hence the part of national unit uh, progress comes in. And uh, I want to believe that um, we've got a man here that we are talking about by the name of uh, Dr. KK, a person that went abroad and sang this song, the Tiende Pamos in Dim Tima Omos. You know, we need to move in one unit, one accord, and the likes like that. But back home again, you see the story is different in which you, more especially the politicians, I think you are the number one culprit in this country that have uh, divided this country, you know, on the political patronage. 
how can we come together in honor of the late President Dr. Kenneth Kaunda without any pretense at all? Because we've seen a lot of leaders parading themselves now because they are mourning KK. Soon after 21 days of national mourning, you are going to see pangas flying around in South. We've got leaders in this field, the political arena, where people can't just speak to each other, they can't face each other. You know, I can give an example. I don't remember. Maybe at that time, maybe I was sleeping or I was dozing. I don't remember when I saw ECL as well as HH having a meal together or even just greeting one another from 2016 or speaking that which, which is beneficial to the country or maybe uniting this country from 2016. Well, away from that, those could be their only issues. But for me, my worry and the worry of many Zambians out there is how can we soldier on from now I think for the sake of, of honoring KK? For me, Richard, I don't want to talk about other people. Yeah. If those two have mentioned our issues, let them go and sort out the issue there. No one have said that yeah, that's that their own baby to nest. I, I, I don't but want for to... me, from now going forward, no, no, here's how the issue. can you as politicians demonstrate or behave, for lack of better words? No, but Dr. Kaunda has demonstrated. Yeah. Um, you remember, we might not agree. Um, you know, UNIP came from mm. the ANC. The first political party in this country mm. was Northern Rhodesia African National Congress. Yeah. First under Mbikusita Lewanika. Mm. Later, under Harim Wangangumbla, mm. when it became really active and, 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 and it was shortened to ANC, mm. and Kaunda became secretary. And by the way, I must tell you that Dr. Kaunda, when he was in in, uh, in, in, in ANC, he lived mm. at my grandfather's uh, place when he used to come to Monza West. Oh. And my mother remembers. Oh. So the old man in Kumbula will come, mm. he'll sleep in that house, and in, in, in the Kaunda will sleep. I can show you the foundation mm. at my grandfather's place where Kaunda used to, to right. come. And later yeah. on, these people separated. Right. The young people, militants, came out of ANC. And they formed Zanke, later on, UNIP, and they went ahead of him, them. But what happened in 1962 is that mm. there was, a general, there was a, a general election at that time, an independence election. And no party could win, uh, could win uh, outrightly. The federal party mm. got, I think, 17 seats. Um, <clears throat> UNIP got 14 seats. And uh, ANC got seven seats. Mm. So no one got the numbers to form government. Right. Now, Dr. Kaunda's party, UNIP, and uh, Harim Wangangumbla's party, who had actually separated, came together for the sake of the independence right. of the country and formed the first <coughs> coalition government. You know, I heard people saying, coalition can't work here. Mm. Coalition is po pushed by small political parties as if they were never small. <laughs> I mean, I believe in coalition government right. because it is a provision of an enlightened society. There are coalitions in most of the, uh, in not the countries that have modern democracy. Mm. Yes, the coalition provision in Britain. And, and they formed the first coalition government. Dr. Kaunda's party, uh, UNIP, and the uh, Harim Wankumbla's party, ANC, formed a coalition government. Right. And uh, <coughs> Kaunda was the minister of law government. I think uh, uh, Mr. Kapoipo was minister of agriculture. Mm. And Nkumbla was minister of African education. That was now a precursor to the 1964 elections that brought independence. Right. So already they learned to work together across the political differences. It looks like now we no longer have uh, patriots. Maybe Dr. Kaunda and the team are the last patriots because right. working together requires patriotism. And later on, these people, remember Dr. Arima uh, Nkumbula, MP for Monza at that time, mm -hmm. uh, was leader of opposition. And once in a while they were having tea. Maybe their constitution was better. That's why this constitution, it requires more refinement. Mm. Leaders of political parties that have MPs in parliament must be also in parliament. They must be the number one on the list. And, like the and, and, Kumbula, the South and Harin Kumbula mm. was MP for Monze and the leader of ANC. Mm. And therefore, in parliament, so you run also for parliamentary seats and for mm. presidents. That's how it is. It was also in Kenya. 
And that's why most of the leaders are always in parliament. Right. In South, Af South Africa and Namibia, they have the, mm. the proportional representation kind of elections where the leader of the party is on top. Oh, yeah. So after elections, like say my party now, if we get, for example, say 10 seats, oh, yeah. I should be number one on the list mm. and lead my mm. party in parliament. So we had better constitutions here. Right. So we need to learn from the history. And they ruled it together. Because if you are in parliament and you're leader of the opposition, the way Harin Kumbla was, and Dr. Kaunda was president, they were, at what they were in governance together. Is, at what path is our constitution making process in Zambia? Uh, would, from independence until where we are now. Would you say we are progressing? Or we, we, we are, are, no, we are, no, 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 my brother. What you need is patriotism. Hmm. I think there's more petty politics than patriotic politics. Right. We can't sit around the table and, 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 and thrash out a constitution and remove the politics. Remember, remember we, as a political parties, we went to Siavonga, Secretary General and so on. We agreed on, on transform, transformational you know, uh, constitutional reforms. I, I have sat in NCC, I sat in the other you know, uh, constitutional, uh, national constitutional conferences. Mm. The Siavonga meeting of Secretary General of political party uh, three years ago or so. Mm was such an important outcome. Right. We looked at what problems we have, what can we do in the constitution to address the problems? Mm. The electoral system, the issue of violence, the issue of media coverage, and from Siavonga, <laughs> at that time, uh, Mr. P, we, there was no need even to go to NDF. Right. That <laughs> amendment was supposed to be about two pages on the key reforms, separation of powers, Ministers appointed us at Parliament. Mm -hmm. We had agreed. The electoral system, so that we can have an electoral system that focuses on a political party than individuals. An electoral system that focuses more on the offer of a political party than individuals. So you remove the individual, you front an organization and what it offers. Political pettiness came in. And, and that was flushed away with the political bathwater. So the, the call, as we mourn Kaunda, is that can we be a little mature in our politics? We can be in different political parties. When an issue of a constitution comes you know, for discussion, let's put these so-called political interests aside mm. and craft it. Because a constitution is above, is above politics. It transcends the life it's of... For the people. It yeah. transcends mm. the life of political parties. Mm. The political parties in Zambia are temporal. They come and go. Some of these political parties we have today, my friend, you like you are still younger than me, isn't it? Sure. You might see all of them dying before you die yourself. They will actually go away. <laughs> Even go out of power. These are temporal jackets. <laughs> and therefore, you need a constitution that transcends political interests. That why, is why, why is Do you know what happened? Petne, you know, a petness coming from. No, no, maybe there's a, it, it, there's a wapo for power. Mm. Uh, look. Wait, let me come to that. Is it, then, I want to 73, 73, 73. Yeah. Again, when there was violence and so on, yeah. um, we're not calling for that. Yeah. We, we must remain multi-party. Yeah, it's sure. the right thing to do. Mm. But there were other you know, uh, circumstances that led to that. Mm. Again, Dr. Gaunda in the Nkumbula, again shook hands and signed the uh, one party you know, you know, you know, mm. you know, democracy through that. Um, right or wrong, but they came together. What is important, they came together for the sake of the country. And then Nkumbula's last term, mm. you know he was MP for Monze, first term. Mm. Second term, there was limitation, he was MP for Monze West. Right. 1973, again, he will now stood under UNIP. <coughs> but he said, okay, we'll work together, but I will not accept any government position. But I give the young people to go into government. Mm. Go into mm. government, mm. young people, Mungon Liso and so mm. on, they went and mm. worked together. And we had such a united country, united to fight the liberation struggle and so on and so forth. Whether it was right or, or wrong, that's not the issue. The issue that these people came together. Right. On that one, they were right to come together, at least to agree on something. Whether the product was right or not, that's a debate for another day. Right. So we must learn to come together and put our political interests aside. It's not about we politicians, it's about the people of Zambia. In summing up that submission, I want yeah. just to find out, are we... I think my question wasn't answered. Of course, I appreciate your submission in terms of yes, uh, come highlighting. Yes, are we progressing? Have we progressed in terms of uh, the constitutional refinement process, no, but, or we are going? No, but back? you see, we, we we have made some little progress. Right. Uh, some of the progress we made because sometimes also we don't take stock of the progress we make. Right. Because sometimes we are also a short-term uh, mm. uh, people. 
Mm, I was in Parliament under you know four presidents. When I went to Parliament, the mm -hmm. president was President Mwanawasa. Then came President Banda. Then came President uh, you know Sata. Mm -hmm. Then came President uh, Lungu. Right. Um, there were some calls by Zambian people mm -hmm. that ran through the Constitutional Review Commissions. Mm -hmm. For example, people have been saying they want a separation of powers, especially between the legislature and mm -hmm. the executive. And one way to enhance that is to appoint ministers outside Parliament. This was an old call. If you remember late Bodwin... And this has been your advocate, actually. Yes, uh, you know, yes. And it's an old one. Yeah. Look at late Bodwin Kumbla, who was our MP also. Yeah. Uh, you know, when they left MM, they said, ah, we went there. This system can't work. Can we begin to push for this? And also the different constitutional review commissions. Yeah. The Monakatwe, you know, the Mvunga, the Monakatwe, the Mwomba. Th those threads run through. Mm. So that we enhance the separation of power. This parliament here, it doesn't matter which government is in office. And I have seen many governments here while I was there, yeah. many presidents. It behaves the same. The problem, the fault is in the constitution. Because when you have a ruling party, whatever it is, whether it's my party or party A or party B, mm. the people who go to the, to, the, to the right, they behave the same because basically they are ministers or ministers to be. They cease to be parliamentarians. Mm. So we need to remove the appointment of ministers from parliament so that the legislature provides unfettered oversight on the government. You cannot mm. account to yourself. You are an MP, you have voted, you didn't become a minister. You mm. lose the accountability role. So that is an outstanding, outstanding issue. It doesn't matter who wins this mm. election. It doesn't matter. It's not about a political party that you must do. It's a demand of the Zambian people. The issue of uh, appointing business as a parliament must be achieved. Mm. And we Zambian people, we're going to demand for that. Yeah, someone said, uh, I, I want we to go. Yes. Someone uh, mentioned that uh, one of the biggest problems we have in Africa is that we've got uh, leaders that, uh, whose patriotism is more to their bellies. Would no, you agree to that? No, their bellies, their pockets, their whatever, their belongings and so on. That mm. is very true. Right. Then there are different types of bellies. Mm. Yeah. So, so, you know, African people, by very nature, people never get satisfied. Mm. So, it's a Maslow issue. We want to consume and consume and have more and more and more and more. Mm. And, and at all levels, that, that continues. But, but let, let me just finish yeah. that, 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 that. I want that, to that, give that, you that maybe a minute just maybe, to uh, speak yes. to the people of Zambia. Maybe that, that thread. Yeah. That thread. Yeah. So, so on the constitutional reforms. Right. We wanted, for example, an election that legislated. It has been done. Okay. We want your citizenship because there are many Zambians who are now living outside in Canada and mm. the US who, who are really stuck because they have to renounce the Zambian citizenship yeah. for them to get opportunities there. Yeah. That has been put in place. I hope it can be quickly be operationalized. Right. We wanted the running mate. That has been done. But we still have outstanding issues, such as the appointment of ministers as the parliament. So that we have a united parliament mm. to provide unfettered oversight on the government. So we must all be aware that this is not from a political party. This is the core of the Zambian people through the various constitutional review commissions. You don't need another review commission here. There's already desk that. Just need a committee, government facilitates, and then you pick out what people have called for. They have called, for example, Before the, the credits enhancement... are done, Mr. President, yes. I want you to face into the camera. Yes. And uh, just once again, remind the people of Zambia, how can we uh, mourn the former president, Dr. Keke, and also remind the people that we still have the elections on August 12th. Why should they go to the booth and vote for uh, PNUP? Well, 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 I will not really, for most of this occasion, yeah. not call for, you know, for, to be voted in. Right. Uh, um, um, how we must mourn uh, Dr. Kaund. I wish yeah. there could be, we still have time, 21 days. Yeah. Maybe we must have public lectures in the evening, and uh, on Monday we'll be visiting our friends there. Right. Um, Tidenti Kaunda is really like a, my brother, he's my right. friend. Mm. I've visited him mm. uh, at, at, at that place, visited the father, uh, you know. We didn't take cameras, we've been visiting. Yeah. Um, I know Panji Kaunda, we were together in parliament. Mm. Mm -hmm. When we meet, we call each other Badala Badala, he's my elder brother. Mm. Uh, uh, and uh, <coughs> how I wish we can uh, have some seminar, some, 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 some talks. Each one must come and speak. Each one must come and speak. You know, just, you know, let's have this one. After you know, the 20, 20, 20, No, no, no. This 21 days. Let's okay. celebrate his life in his right. style. 
that we can have you know some talks every evening people from industry uh, the people that he worked with we the young people who are beneficiaries of his uh, grace you know through his good policies as a unique we need to celebrate the unique people and also look after them you know the way they were dumped after 1991 is not correct um, we benefited from their sacrifice and today we laugh at them that they have nothing you understand eh? yeah we've become such a materialistic people Dr. Kaunda has taught us that when you are a leader, you must leave materialism aside. And therefore, our appeal as we mourn Dr. Kaunda is that let's have a deep reflection and collect the, the lessons learned and apply them for the future. And they are good lessons. We can learn and build this country going into the future. We have to go. Thank you so much, Mr. President, for coming. And uh, we hope to see you soon again. This is uh, more like your house now. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. Instant, we, after the funeral, uh, you know, we can come and, uh, you know, oh, go yeah. deeper in our manifesto, Indeed. look at the pillars of our manifesto, so we can arrange that we come here and, and discuss that. Oh, For yeah. now, let's uh, celebrate and mourn uh, Dr. Dr. Kaunda. In fact, we are actually celebrating. Right. He's a man who lived 97. We have learned something. Mm. He, lived, he led a very healthful life. You know he was a vegetarian, eh? Yeah. I'm SDA myself. Mm. He, he actually embraced the health message. Even he sacrificed the, 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 the food, what food to eat. Yes, that yes, was yes. much of his sacrifice. It's, it's true. When you, when you live, when you <laughs> live to meat, go. you live longer. Yeah, <laughs> we have to go. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you. To our viewers as well, we appreciate you for um, having accompanied us in this uh, discussion. Uh, my guest has been uh, Honorable or President Haiv Hamdudu, President of uh, Party of National Unit Progress. And of course, allow me to appreciate my camera person, Christopher, in the studio, as well as obvious Kapunda uh, in the transmission. We appreciate you, comrades. May God bless Zambia. May God bless Mother Africa. Good night. <laughs>